Hello. <laughs> it's good to see you. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some playing cards that a subscriber in Australia sent to me. And the cards have different animals from Australia on them. So we're going to be looking at each of the cards in the pack. It's a little pack of cards, like playing cards. But first, I want to show you something completely unrelated. <laughs> As I sometimes do, if I, I run across something cool. I went to JNS Cafeteria in High Point tonight with my dad. He loves going there. <laughs> It's, it's kind of like if you've ever been to um, K&W. I don't know why these places always have two initials. I think it must be the initials of the owner's names or something. There's a J and S cafeteria in High Point. He loves going there when he comes to see me. So we went and I noticed that they had a display there of boar and castle items. If you're not familiar with Boar and Castle, if you know anything about Greensboro, you may have heard of Boar and Castle. Um, they had t-shirts and Boar and Castle sauce. And I got a couple of the t-shirts. I wanted to show you one of them. It's brand new, still in the bag. And I'm going to leave this in the bag because I'm sending this to a subscriber in England that I talked to earlier today and um, I thought that they might like to have this. This is a very, very Greensboro thing here. The Boar and Castle. It was an establishment that is no longer in business, but you can still get the sauce that they came up with at the Boren Castle. I never got to go there. Um, unfortunately, I, I was never able to go, but you can still get Boer and Castle sauce. Now, you can find this occasionally in stores around here. Um, this is for beef, chicken, fries, and seafood. For seasoning, marinating, grilling, and cooking. In this Boar and Castle sauce, they give a little history here. This is a picture of the Boar and Castle. Born in the famous restaurant in Greensboro, North Carolina that shares its name, Boar and Castle sauce is truly in a category all its own. Originally created for butter steak sandwiches, this mouth-watering sauce was soon poured on burgers, fries, onions, uh, onion rings and chicken by restaurant patrons. Today, that beloved restaurant and drive-in that served three generations is gone, but that original one-of-a-kind flavor is alive in every bottle of Boar and Castle sauce. So I'm going to send these two things to a subscriber. I just thought it would be cool. I got two of these shirts. I got one for myself. And, and this is for the other person. Oh, so it was my shirt though. I took it out of the plastic bag to look at it. And it also has a small image of this. This is the back. There's a small image of the logo on the front as well. I, had, I just got it out of the bag to look at it. And I, I set it down on the coffee table for two seconds. I had a can of Pepsi sitting right beside it. My younger son just happened to walk through, and I don't even know how he did it. He somehow managed to hit the can of Pepsi. It spilled all over my shirt. <laughs> so I immediately had to go throw it in the washing machine. <laughs> so, yeah. I said, I can't have nice things. I was just being funny. But, so mine was instantly <laughs> coated in Pepsi, but this one is still freshly sealed. A nice little Boren Castle t-shirt and a little bottle of the sauce to try because if I'm going to send something to someone in another country, I like it to be, you know, a, a neat looking little local thing. And you can't really get any more local than Boer and Castle because they were, that was a Greensboro place. So I just couldn't believe it. And 
if, if you live in the area, now tomorrow is National Hamburger Day. I didn't even know that until this evening. JNS Cafeteria in High Point is going to be having uh, hamburgers. Uh, and I think they have a special meal that you can get tomorrow in celebration of National Hamburger Day. And they're going to have Boren Castle sauce to put on your hamburger if you want to. I'm probably not going to go, but I thought that was kind of cool that they're, they're going to have Boren Castle sauce for your hamburgers tomorrow. Okay. So that was the totally unrelated stuff. Now, here we have the cards. And I don't know if each card has a different animal on it or if there are repeats, but we're going to find out. I think it must be, you know, maybe they're all original because we have things like the Tasmanian Devil, Platypus, Great White Shark, and I'm probably going to butcher the names of some of these. I had to not look at these in advance, so I apologize if I said it wrong. You can correct me, but I have the memory of a goldfish and I won't remember it, so it's probably pointless. A gal Gala, Gala, G-A-L-A-H. It's pretty. Look at it. Wow. Kangaroo, saltwater crocodile, humpback whale, and a koala. Very cool. So we have 52 Australian animals. Oh, and it literally says right here, because I'm blind apparently, a different picture in every card. Yeah, it says it on both sides, and I looked right at it and didn't see it, so the power of observation escapes me. I'm going to pop this open. Oh, take a look at these little cards. There we go. Just like magic. Isn't this cute? I love this. I get the coolest things from subscribers. I still say, I still say I have the best subscribers of anybody on YouTube. I totally believe that. Oh, I have an idea for a video. Speaking of cards, something I do sometimes, sort of as a meditation, is I'll take a deck of cards, and I wouldn't do it with these, and I shuffle the deck over and over and over. I don't know if you would like a video of that, just like no talking, just shuffling cards. It can be kind of loud though, so I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if that would be a good idea or not. Sometimes I come up with ideas and I think they're good, but then I'll get halfway through the video and go, this is really stupid. <laughs> this is really bad. And sometimes I just abandon it completely. I don't know. Yeah. Or we could do a video just handling the cards. That's a nice sound too. I do like... I always found the sound of, you know, handling and, you know, giving out the cards to be nice and relaxing to me. I haven't really done much with cards and videos, but it's an idea. All right, let's get started. So we have diamonds. Ace of diamonds is a rainbow lorikeet. Oh, aren't they beautiful? Look at, I love all the colorful birds. Oh my goodness. We do have a few colorful birds here where I live. We have cardinals that are a bright red. We have blue birds and we have goldfinches, which this time of year are a bright yellow pretty much all over. Kind of like that little part right there. They, oh, they're like a highlighter. They're, they're just neon yellow. Beautiful birds. Okay. The rainbow lorikeet is the ace of diamonds. Beautiful. We have, oh, a wallaby. Look at the little wallaby. He's so cute. Look at the little face. So two of diamonds is a wallaby. Three of diamonds is a goanna. Look at that, a goanna. Now I've seen these in the zoo. I think, you know, we actually have a really nice zoo here in North Carolina. It's about 30 minutes from here. It's really, I should take you to the zoo one day. Oh my gosh. There's so many neat things there. Goanna. Four of diamonds is the red-eyed tree frog. And the train likes that tree frog. Look at those eyes. That looks like me first thing in the morning before I do my eye drops. Oh, especially when the pollen is bad. Four of diamonds. Red-eyed tree frog. The five of diamonds is the azure kingfisher. 
Oh, nice. Now we do have kingfishers here, but I don't know if we have this particular species. The azure kingfisher? I don't know, but we do have some, um, at least one or two types of kingfishers here. Five of diamonds. Azure kingfisher. Oh, I'm embarrassed. This is one I don't know about. Six of diamonds is the numbat? Numbat? I've never heard of that, but it's, look at his little face. It kind of has a face that reminds me of an anteater. It does a little bit. It's kind of like an anteater's face. Look at the little furry thing. He's so cute. He's like, looks like he has little pants on. <laughs> little, pa little khaki pants. That's, cu that's cute. Okay, seven of diamonds is the humpback whale. Oh, wow. I want to go out on one of those whale watching tours. Oh, that would be awesome. I want to go see some whales. We actually did get to see some, um, no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of dolphins, on our cruise a couple of summers ago. That would be neat to see. Oh, we do have these. Eight of diamonds, the monarch butterfly. I actually had some monarch butterflies in my backyard today. Fluttering through little monarch butterflies. Oh, number nine of diamonds is a blue wren. Now we do have several types of wrens here and they look very similar, but ours don't have any blue on them. It's like you crossed a wren with a blue jay. We do have blue jays here. They're, they're very pretty. Very noisy, but they're very pretty. A blue wren is the nine of diamonds. Ooh, ten of diamonds is a red back spider. It's kind of like a um a black widow, but it's not. See, it's different. It's like somebody spilled paint on it. A red back spider. I'm guessing it's poisonous. Seems like pretty much everything in Australia can kill you. <laughs> That's what it seems like. The Jack of Diamonds is a Boyd's Forest Dragon. Look at that little fella. Look at his little, like he's got on a helmet. <laughs> like a motorcycle helmet with the spikes on top. And he has little spikes on his back. Oh, look at his throat. He has spikes on his throat. He's spiky. Boyd's Forest Dragon. Jack of Diamonds. Queen of Diamonds is a fur seal. Oh, it looks shiny. You can see the sun shining on the fur. Pretty, it's blue. It looks kind of gray, and then back here it looks blue. And the little, the cute little whiskers, and the tiny ear. <laughs> oh, you know, they're related to dogs. They are. They have a common ancestor with dogs. Fur seal. Queen of diamonds. An eastern brown snake is, a, is the king of diamonds, and he looks mad. There's a bridge, like a brow over the eye. An eastern brown snake. Huh. We don't have those here. Ace of spades is a kangaroo. Cute little, oh, look at the little baby, little Joey in the pocket, in the pouch. Those little hands just hanging down. A kangaroo. Ace of spades. And this one I saw earlier, two of spades. Gala, Gala. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm sorry. It's a beautiful bird, though. Its wings and the the feathers up here they're like they look like cotton candy. They look like blue cotton candy. And this part looks neon pink. Oh, the beak is also blue. He looks like a punk rocker. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Two of space. Three of spades is the Tasmanian devil. That's what I look like when I yell at my kids. <laughs> that was me when he spilled a Pepsi on my new Boring Castle shirt two seconds after I took it out of the bag. Like, really? <laughs> Dag damn it. Oh, his teeth are so white. Look how white the teeth are. What toothpaste do you use? That's awesome. The little ears back here. Those little silly looking ears. Tasmanian Devil is the Three of Clubs. Did I say spades? I've been saying spades. 
I don't know. These are clubs. I'm sorry. Ace of clubs. Don't hit me. It has been a day, let me tell you. I, this, oh, I got my bathtub and the tile above it refinished, like resurfaced today. And it took the guy about seven hours to finish it. It looks beautiful. I'm going to show it to you later. But it looks fabulous. But now the entire house smells like a Sharpie marker. You know how the permanent marker smells? I've had the windows open and I've ventilated as much as possible, but you can still kind of smell it. So I have fumes from that. Um... I think it's messing me up. And then my dad and my stepmom came for a visit. And I'm tired. I'm tired. Three of clubs. That's not three of spades. I'm sorry. Well, four of spades. That, I said it again. That thing. Clubs. Four of clubs is the platypus. I love the platypus. This animal is so crazy. It's like a five-year-old got to won a contest and got to invent an animal. And they came up with the platypus. But I think the platypus is fascinating. I love the platypus. Look at that beetle and fur and flippers. It's awesome. All right, five of clubs. I was about to say echinacea. It looks like it makes me think of echinacea. Look at this guy. Look at the quills. This has to be related to a porcupine. Oh, look at the little snout on it and that big eye. It's like an anime creature. What is this? I gotta look this up. Okay, according to Google, this is pronounced echidna. If that's wrong, you can get mad at Google. Echidna? I have never heard of this. Look at this thing. So it looks like it has quills back here. That is an interesting little critter. Now, I would not want to fall on it. Could you imagine pulling these things out of your butt? Long... Oh, a masked owl. Six of clubs is a masked owl. It looks like a barn owl. Their whole face is basically like a satellite dish. It, it the, the uh, their ability to echolocate is so fascinating. I love that. Look at that. Look at his face. Got a little heart shape to it. The masked owl. I love owls. I think owls are so cool. It does. Though. It looks like a barn owl. Evolution is interesting. And now seven of clubs we have a lionfish. These are beautiful. Look at the colors. The lionfish has stripes this way. It even has a stripe over its eyeball. Look at that. And the fins just flutter out here and here. And these up here have blue in them. Seven of clubs is the lionfish. Oh, Eight of Clubs is a dingo. It's got your baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. Eight of Clubs is a dingo. Look at the little, little cute little ears. Doesn't it kind of look like a Shiba Inu? Is that what they're called? The Dogecoin dog. A dingo. Eight of Clubs. Oh, number nine is a bottlenose dolphin. Look, they look happy. A bottlenose dolphin. And you see the little teeth? Very cute. Nine of clubs. It's the bottlenose dolphin. Oh, are you upside down? Ten of clubs is a flying fox. What in the world? Whoop. Flying fox. Look at that little face. It has a little tiny nose and big eyes. And look at the, the little ears look like they're made out of leather. <laughs> it's like a costume or something. The flying fox. Huh. That's neat. A bilby. Oh my god. What kind of... This is like something I'd see in a dream. Jack of clubs is a bil bilby. Now part of my regional dialect, I don't know if you picked up on it. I don't know why. But I, it, where I come from... If you have B-I-L together, it ends up sounding like B-I-W, like the word build, build, building, building, build, build, literally, B-U-I-L-D-I-N-G, 
sounds like building and the G on the end just falls off building so for me it's like Bilby Bilby look at the ears on that joker God and that nose look at that little red nose and the little feet does it hop you know we have kangaroo um, mice rats they're small but my dad lives up in the mountains in Virginia and they have the little kangaroo mice I, or they're small. They don't get very big, but they jump and they have back legs like this. We don't have them here in Greensboro, but up where my dad lives, they have those up there. Bilby, Jack of Clubs. Interesting. That is a weird looking little critter. So it looks like it's gray and pink. Look at its little stripes of pink. The feet are pink. The nose is very pink. And this giant like bunny rabbit ears, like a jackrabbit. Wow. Isn't that some cassowary a queen of clubs? And if I'm saying that wrong, I, well, I remember where I know these from. I have a book all about birds, and I remember reading about these, but I don't remember what I read. Cassowary. That's a big bird. He has a, a ridge, like a big old horn on his head, and blue here. And then this pink stuff. Look at that thing. Well, he means business. That big orange eye. Oh, and the king of clubs is the frilled. Yeah, I-L-L. -L. It frilled. It becomes a W. Frilled. Somebody pointed that out to me. And I, I, I meant to mention that. That is a specific regional uh, quirk of the language. Frilled. Like building, frilled, neck, lizard. Man, what a face. He reminds me of the Joker or something. Look at that face. And so, see, now when they're just hanging out, these frills can kind of lay flat. But when they're trying to look big and scary, they fluff them out. And it just comes out from their neck like boom, frill. And they can, I think they can, can they run? I think they can run. And they have the frill out and they look scary. Frilled neck lizard. Look at these little feet. <laughs> I used to love, we had these little wood lizards where I grew up. And um, they were mostly gray. And they're super fast. And it's very challenging to catch them. And I used to love to catch them. I was a very rough and tumble kid. I loved getting dirty. I loved getting down there and catching lizards and snakes and all kinds of things. Now this is the Ace of Hearts. The wedge-tailed eagle. I have never heard of the wedge-tailed eagle. It's beautiful. Look at the dark feathers here. We ha we do have bald eagles here in North Carolina. Um, not far from where I grew up, you can they're spotted pretty regularly. Bald eagles are wedge-tailed eagle, the ace of hearts. I've never heard of that. Oh. <laughs> Two of hearts is a wombat. I have heard of wombats. Look at that little nose. Oh, look at his feet. He looks sleepy or he like he's stoned or something. Look at his eyes. Just He looks like Cheech and Chong. <laughs> That's awesome. Wombat. A little wombat. Ooh, we look like seaweed because that helps you survive. This is the leafy sea dragon on the three of hearts. This is a um, a seahorse. God. Well, no, a sea dragon. There may be a difference in what you call a seahorse and a sea dragon. I have one tattoo and it is of a seahorse. I was thinking about getting another one, but I haven't quite made up my mind. This is the leafy sea dragon. If I did get another one, it would be small. Because I don't like pain. I don't do well with pain. But it's beautiful. Look at the colors. It's kind of a um, greenish, yellow. I love tapping on these cards. It's actually really nice. I like that. Oh, the Four of Hearts is an emu. My cousin's wife just got to, um, em em emu? Is it emus or emu? I don't know. She has two baby emus. They have a good setup for it. They look very happy. <laughs> look at those eyes. 
And they get really big too. That's cool. Emu. That's a four of hearts. Ooh, five of hearts is the giant cuttlefish. Well, what in the world is going on with this thing's head? A giant cuttlefish. I don't really know anything about them. Oh, this is beautiful. Six of hearts is the crimson rosella. Isn't that a beautiful bird? Oh my goodness, you guys have the prettiest birds. Look at, I love the color combination. This is a nice outfit they've put together here. You got the red theme throughout and then you have this nice blue. Kind of a bluish gray here in, in the matching shoes. The shoes in the purse match. And then you have this navy blue, then a lighter color that kind of goes with the beak. I can't even put together an outfit that looks that nice. That is a spiffy little bird. Six of hearts, crimson rosella, and it's posing for us. Oh, number seven is Nemo himself. Seven of hearts, the clownfish. Oh, they're so pretty. I like the little clownfish. I love the vibrant colors in these little fish. It's the clownfish. It looks like it's waving at us like, hey. <laughs> is this your little fin over here? <laughs> the clownfish. He's waving. Eight of hearts is the black swan. Wow. I have seen one of these in person. Where did I see that? It was at a lake. But I cannot remember where I was. But I did get to see a black swan once. This is beautiful. Look at the bill. Or, yeah, bill. Bill. It sounds like B-I-W when I say it. Bill. <laughs> I, I, I physically, I, I find it hard to say it any other way. Bill. It has a bill, and it's red with a white tip on it, like it dipped it in paint. Look at the beautiful black feathers on this bird. Oh my goodness. And they're, I think they're big too. They're pretty good size. So the eight of hearts is the black swan. Oh, next we have the nine of hearts, the green tree snake. There was a children's book written, um, and I had it for my kids. They loved it. They both loved it. I read this book probably a hundred times each. It was called Verdi, V-E-R-D-I, and I think it was about one of these snakes. It's a really cute little children's book. Oh, that my kids loved it. It was called Verdi, V-E-R-D-I. A very neat little book, but I think it was about the green tree snake. I, I could be wrong, but I think this is the kind of snake Verdi was. I still have that book, actually, I didn't keep all of the books that they had, but Verdi was one I held on to because they both liked it so much. Ooh, a yabby? It just looks like a... It looks like a lobster headed to a rave. What in the world? Okay, Ten of Hearts is a yabby. A yabby. Look at him. <laughs> He's reaching up. Woo! He's very colorful. Looks like a lot of blue. And then there's a little bit of red here, kind of a greenish, orangish color here in spots. So the Ten of Hearts is the Yabby. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness. The Jack of Hearts is the Ulysses Butterfly. That is beautiful. Look at that blue. And then it's, the outer part is black. That is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. And it has little, like, swallow tails. Like, you know, the bird has little things here. That is the Ulysses butterfly. And that is the Jack of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts is the box jellyfish. Doesn't really look like a box. Looks like a volleyball. <laughs> with strings. A busted volleyball. The Queen of Hearts is the box jellyfish. I remember my brother got stung on the elbow by a jellyfish once when we went to the beach. I remember that his, his elbow looked funky for a while. Uh, ooh. You look sunburnt, dude. This is the king of hearts, the spotted... I gotta look that up. I don't even know. It looks like couscous or couscous, but I think probably neither one of those is correct, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Google. Well, Google said it was couscous. Spotted couscous. Oh, the little fella looks scared. I think his eyes are brown. 
you know, a lot of these animals, their, their eyes are like black or orange. I think they look brown. I'm not sure. A spotted couscous. I don't see any spots. A little dark place right there. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to have to look some of these up. I, I love to learn about animals. And I don't know anything about this one. That's the king of hearts. The spotted couscous. Ace of spades is the koala. Look at his little nose. The koala is the ace of spades. Cute little koala. They are so adorable. These little eyes. <laughs> they just look like a little stuffed animal. Ooh, the two of spades is a th thorny devil. Look at all the spikes on that thing. The thorny devil. Now, is that a... I'm assuming this is a lizard. There are frogs that have big spikes, too. That's a pokey little fella there. That's some good camouflage, though, on that thorny devil. Don't want it to sound like I'm saying something else. A dugong. Oh! A dugong. I read about dugongs. And I don't remember what I read. Because I'm old. And don't retain information as well as I used to. The three of spades is the dugong. They're related to manatees. They have to be. Look at them. A little eye there. The dugong. I'm going to read to you about dugongs because now I want to know about them too. Okay, I looked it up on my phone. I'm going to read to you about the dugong. It's just a little thing. The dugong is a medium-sized marine mammal. It is one of four living species of the order Serenia, which also includes three species of manatees. It is the only living representative of the once diverse family Dugongidae. Well, I like the way that sounds. Dugong, Dugongidae. Dugongidae. Its closest modern relative, Stellar's sea cow, was hunted to extinction in the 18th century. Interesting. Yeah. So that's the dugong. Three of spades. And four of spades is the pelican. We do have those here. Um, the ones that I see a lot at the beach are dark brown. But we do have pelicans here. This is a pretty one. It has black back here and then white too. Yeah, the ones around here are more of a, like a dark brown. Well, not here, but at the that way. I'm pointing towards the east, the coast. The fairy penguin is the five of spades. Oh, isn't it beautiful? I've never heard of a fairy penguin. Look at the pretty thing. This little face. I don't know if this is a dark blue or a gray. It's kind of hard to tell. The front is the silvery white. It looks like there's a little bit of white here on the little, the little wing. <laughs> and the little feet. It has this little tail. The fairy penguin is the five of spades. I only have to read about those two. And a possum. It's not like what we call a possum here. This is the six of spades. Y'all have a lot of marsupials. The possum. It's not an O possum, which is what we have here. But we're lazy, so we drop the O and we just call it a possum. Your possum's cuter than ours. I mean, I'm proud of our little, our little uh, marsupial. But... This one is cuter. I mean, the possum, the ends of the possum are just, our opossum, are just ugly. It's got that naked tail and that pointy little rat face. And they get mad if you bother them. <laughs> but don't kill them because they're, they're pretty awesome. They eat ticks. And that alone, I think, is a reason to leave them alone. Little possum. That thing is cute. It looks more like a kangaroo than an opossum. Neat. Here is a kookaburra. Kookaburra. I remember reading about the kookaburra. Seven of spades. I remember thinking that they have a face like a newscaster. Like a news anchor. You remember like especially back, you know, in the 80s and earlier. It would always be some guy with like plastic looking hair and a serious face. Like the kookaburra. Minus the beak. But look at the pretty feathers. You have gray and white up here, or black and white. And they have that neat little blue streak. It's like my hair right now. And then darker blue here. And then you have the sort of um, a layering of uh, black, gray, and white back here. And sort of mostly white here. 
and that is the kookaburra and they're quite small if I'm if I'm remembering correctly I don't think they get very big but yeah very serious little face kookaburra is a seven of spades the eight of spades is the ibis ibis oh look at that long skinny beak the ibis stands pretty tall and it has a dark head little dark legs and white feathers here that is the ibis i remember one time see my brother when he was younger used to um look at that bird book that we had and it had the most beautiful illustrations and one time he saw a picture of an ibis and he had this modeling clay and he spent all day making a model of the ibis in the pose that it was in in the picture he, it was perfect. It was the most beautiful thing. And he would take a toothpick to do the detail on the bird. He spent hours making that thing. And it was beautiful when he got done. Yeah, I remember he did that with an ibis. He did that with several birds in that book. And then the nine of spades is the green sea turtle. And he looks like he's up to something. Look how he's looking. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> or he's snubbing us. He's about to just swim away. The green sea turtle. It's got some interesting colors going on unless that's just the the light from above. Pretty little green sea turtle, and that is the nine of spades. Oh my word, that's the cutest thing I've seen today. What is this? I've never heard of this. That looks like a little teddy bear. The ten of spades. Oh, look at his little face. The tree kangaroo is the ten of spades. Look at that little fella. Oh, I just want to hug it. Look, look how cute it is. It probably kicked my ass, but he's so cute. He's ripped. He's been doing some peg work. Look at that. Wow. The tree. I want to read about the tree kangaroo now. He's cute. Oh, okay. You know, this is an interesting tip, and it's something you might not have thought of, but I do it all the time. If you see an animal or something you want to know, just a quick snapshot of information about them, just go to Wikipedia and look it up. I mean, that's, you know, pretty obvious, but I have learned so much doing that. Now, the tree kangaroo here looks cute, but here he is, man. He ain't playing. He's like a, a teddy bear on steroids or something. Look at that tail. I could beat you with that tail. I'm going to read to you this little blurb about tree kangaroos. Tree kangaroos are marsupials of the genus Dendrologus, adapted for arboreal mo uh, locomotion. They inhabit the tropical rainforests of New Guinea and far northeastern Queensland, along with some of the islands in the region. Most tree kangaroos are considered threatened due to hunting and habitat destruction. They are the only true arboreal macropods. But look at that look at that tail. Cool. Oh, that's crazy. That is something. So that is the Ten of Spades, the tree kangaroo. That's just so cute. The oh god. The Jack of Spades is the great white shark. And I am not messing with you. Man, look at those teeth. Oh, those dead eyes. Have you ever seen the movie Jaws? Don't watch it, because you'll never want to go in the ocean again. That that movie, even now, I'm, on, I'm pushing 50. Every time I go to the beach and I get in the ocean, I think about Jaws every time. Every time my kids get in the ocean, I think about it, and it freaks me out. I just keep yelling at them to come back. Don't go too far, because it's just, oh my god. So anyway, the Jack of Spades is the great white shark. And the queen of spades is the sulfur-chested cockatoo. Look at that beautiful thing. So we have like basically a feather mohawk of yellow feathers. And then down here it's kind of a creamy color with little bits of yellow in it. And a black beak. A little eye. Uh, that is the sulfur... Did I say sulfur-crested? Sulfur-chested cockatoo. I don't know what I said. Sulfur. Well, it is about the color of sulfur. Yeah. Queen of spades. And the king of spades is the saltwater crocodile. Coming up out of the water, he means business. So that is the king of spades. The saltwater crocodile. 
and the Joker <laughs> is a kangaroo and a koala. <laughs> Little cartoon drawings, those are cute. I want to do a video, and I might, I might have, and I've just forgotten. I've always just loved that sound. I find it very relaxing to listen to someone, you know, just like hand out cards. Like that. I love it. So that is a look at my deck of Australian animal playing cards and they're all different. That was really nice. I enjoyed looking through those. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed these cards too. And my Boar and Castle t-shirt and sauce. <laughs> I hope that you have a wonderful day. And I will see you again soon.